the first time we came here. Oh, Paimon remembers! Nahida's consciousness had been trapped by the doctor, but we followed the clues she left behind to help her. So much time has already passed since then, and it seems Sumeru's changing for the better now that Nahida's in charge, right? Paimon just hopes this peace will last a long time, and then Nahida won't have any more new problems to deal with. Yeah, guess you're right. Hmm. We somehow always find ourselves right in the thick of it. Who knows what will happen next? Come to think of it, maybe it's all because of you. Maybe you're just a magnet for trouble. She was super tired. Paimon got caught in some strange whirlpool and sucked out into sea. And even then, you fished Paimon out. <sighs> anyway, for Nahida's sake, maybe we should think about heading to our next destination for now. Ah, look who it is. Running into you in a place like this? I can see you two still love wandering around. Oh, it's Dia! Hmm. Since when are we just wandering around? We're usually taking care of some serious business. Even though it may have nothing to do with our journey. But never mind that. What brings you here? I just finished a commission in the desert for a usual client of mine. Nothing too interesting. Just escorting a shipment of goods. I'm on my way to report back. That's when I saw you two all the way over there. Chatting away. What were you two talking about, anyway? Huh? Y you serious? Can't say I saw that coming. Hmm, but you are travelers, after all. I guess you'd never stay for too long in one place. Bumping into you like this will become a rarity. Ah, I'm starting to feel sad just thinking about it. Hey. How about I gather a few mercs to escort you two? What do you say? Thanks, but no need. Oh, Paimon had no clue you'd miss us so much. But don't worry, we'll come back to see everyone when we get a chance. <laughs> Sounds good. All you need to do to get to Fontaine is cross this stretch of desert and navigate some waterways. Knowing you two, I'm sure it won't be anything you can't handle. So, uh, when are you leaving? dishes in Sumeru that Paimon hasn't tried yet. Now, where's that list Paimon made? Hmm. I see. Guess you won't be needing a going away party or anything. It's sad enough to see you go like this. Though, now that I think about it, Sumeru wouldn't be what it is today without you. Seems true heroes always prefer leaving quietly. <laughs> by the way, should we go say bye to Nahida? Oh, good point. Then there's no need to bother her in the real world. Then, I guess this is goodbye for now, Traveler and Paimon. Whether as a client or a friend, you're always welcome to come find me.
Swallow Fury. me, it's a tragedy how things ended for him. Clearly, he was a pretty decent person. Yeah, I didn't expect that kind of ending for him. I thought he would at least fight on a little longer for his family. I was expecting a sudden plot twist, but it's a pity that it never happened. Still, his story is quite the tearjerker. Uh, excuse me, can I help you too? I couldn't help but notice you standing here listening. Uh, hi. <laughs> We're travelers new to Fontaine, and we had something we wanted to ask, but you seem to be really busy talking about some kind of play, so we didn't want to interrupt. A <laughs> uh, play? Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about something that really happened. In fact, it's a case that was just heard a few days ago. Really? Like, a real trial? But the way you were talking about it and the words you used just now made it sound like some kind of story. Well, good tales are often based on true stories, aren't they? And what you see in reality may also be someone deliberately putting on an act while harboring ulterior motives. Whether something is true or not simply isn't that important. The main thing is whether the story being acted out on the stage is splendid enough. Oh, but it looks like you're not from around here. You probably don't know that the Fontaine Court of Justice is called the Opera Epicles, or more commonly known as just the Opera House. But, uh, shouldn't court cases be treated a little more seriously than that? Not to question Fontaine's way of doing things, it's just that putting someone on trial is usually a very serious thing. <laughs> no worries. Other visitors to Fontaine have wondered the same thing. You could say that we just don't want to waste the moving stories behind those cases. And as for your worries about whether the cases are treated with due reverence, we have the absolutely just and honorable Chief Justice Nouvellet, as well as the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, a machine created by the Archon. Between the machine and the Chief Justice, false charges and injustice are a thing of the past now. Pure trees? Is it some kind of machine, too? Oh, Paimon's curious. We should check it out if we get the chance. Wait, Paimon almost forgot to ask you a question. Um, do you know what we should do if we want to meet the Hydro Archon? Oh, that's easy. Just go to the Opera House. Lady Farina practically lives there. You could definitely say it's her biggest passion. Ha. <laughs> I think what they mean is that they wish to speak with the Archon personally. In that case, I'm afraid it's going to be a tad more difficult. You'll have to make an appointment well in advance, and it'll depend on whether or not she has any time slots of it. Huh. Is the Hydro Archon super busy taking care of official stuff? Wait, didn't you say that she's always at the Opera House? No, no. Lady Farina seldom takes an interest with the nation's affairs. 
The reason it's difficult to make an appointment is simply because she's incredibly popular. That's right. After all, she is the Archon. Though she may tend to get a little dramatic from time to time, people can't get enough of her. Huh. First time Paimon's ever heard of an Archon being described that way before. <gasps> Wait! Paimon gets now! The Hydro Archon is kind of like a big celebrity here, right? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. <laughs> Perhaps you could even say our mascot. Hang on. This is still Fontaine's Archon you're talking about. You should show some more respect. Yes, you're right. I guess I should at least try to be a little more respectful in front of visitors. Otherwise, I might get arrested and find myself face to face with Monsieur Nouvellet. <laughs> Come on. Sure, there's a lot of... All right, I think we get it. Thank you. At least we now know that we can find the Hydro Archon at the Opera House. But who knows how long making an appointment will take? <sighs> Guess we could have a look around the city in the meantime. Hey! What are you looking over there for? Huh. Maybe something's the matter. <gasps> she isn't going to jump into the water, is she? Uh, maybe we better go check on her. About many things, actually. But there's nothing I can do but just keep my troubles to myself. I was just reminiscing about a place my brother and I would play when we were kids. It was just atop that hill over there. See? Uh, you're pointing at the sea. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that you and your brother lived in the water? No people call the waters around Fontaine a sea. It's actually just an inland lake that's filled with fresh water. And no, I can still see that hill clearly in my memories. Now, it's been completely submerged. He would skip and jump, tossing sand in the wind. The sun shone brightly, and the air was filled with the scent of the sea. But now, the water is gradually swallowing our memories. <sighs> It won't be long before it swallows us. Uh... Sorry... Paimon doesn't really get what you mean. Ah, I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Are you Lynette's new friends? Oh, and you are? Thanks for looking after my sister. She often comes here to reminisce about our childhood, that's all. There's no need for any concern. Oh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Linny, and this is my sister, Lynette. If I had to guess, I'd say you must be travelers from abroad. Nice to meet you! Paimon is Paimon, and this is a traveler! We just arrived in Fontaine! We were just talking with your sister. Uh, even though we didn't really get what she was saying. Hmm, I see. It's unusual for Lynette to be so willing to talk with anyone. In fact, she seldom speaks at all. I'm usually the only one she ever talks to. Oh, really? Then you two are just like us! Paimon's always the one talking for some reason. <laughs> so that's how you think it is? I also think my brother can be too talkative at times. Oh. <laughs> Seems you were right, Paimon. We are quite similar. <laughs> so, what did Lynette mean just now when she said that the water is engulfing your memories? And that it won't be long before it engulfs you too? Oh, 
that. It's from a prophecy that's been circulating in Fontaine for some time now. Well, I suppose prophecy isn't exactly the right word, because that implies a certain amount of where to begin. Hmm. Let's put that question on hold for a moment. We still haven't formally greeted each other yet, have we? Uh, did all the introductions earlier not count? Hello, Traveler. And hello, Paimon. Hey! Why didn't Paimon get a handshake? You're not poking fun at Paimon, are you? <laughs> Please, don't take offense. Just consider it a sort of etiquette we have here in Fontaine when making new friends. You should remember it. It might prove useful. Oh! Alright then. Well, Paimon's just happy to have a local friend now. By the way, we were just getting ready to go to the Opera House to meet the Hydro Archon. Would you be able to show us the way? Huh. So you're going to see Lady Farina? No problem at all. In fact, I was planning to go to the Opera House later myself. I'll gladly take you once I finish things here. Please, follow me. You said you were going to see Lady Farina? Well, it seems Lady Farina has come to see you. in hand and those with nothing at all raise your glasses in celebration if you don't have one then just raise your hand and leave as you can all see two unfamiliar travelers have arrived in our nation come let us make a toast in honor of this traveler and her companion, who have journeyed here from distant lands. Uh, is she talking about us? I've long heard of the turmoil and chaos you've left in your wake as you visited other nations. But I welcome you nevertheless. No, I have come to receive you personally. Fear is for insignificant cowards. I am a god, and I will never entertain the notion, of course. Seeking an audience with me is the most sensible thing to do. It will allow you to truly behold my power and witness my authority. Intelligent people always gather under the <laughs> correct banner. I, Fosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. Yeah. Paimon still can't believe it. Feels like we've only been here for a few minutes. But the Hydro Archon's entrance was... Uh... How should Paimon describe it? A little... Over the top? Ahem. <clears throat> uh, Miss Hydro Archon? How did you know we were coming? Ah, uh, I see. As out 
Outlanders, you inevitably lack even some of the most basic understanding. Don't forget that even the gods can be divided into the mediocre and the excellent. I suppose it's only natural for you to be awestruck by my abilities. You had best stop and consider. Do you really have the noble qualities and etiquette necessary to communicate with a god? All it takes is a flick of my finger for me to know everything about you. Whoa. Talk about sounding high and mighty. <laughs> oh? What's with these looks? Uh... Is she waiting for us to start talking? Wow, I didn't expect to see Lady Farina here. What a surprise! Wait, does this mean they're the legendary blonde traveler? How did I not notice before? Hey, what's all the commotion? Oh, is that Lady Farina? Is there some kind of drama going on? Of course, that's the blonde traveler. The one all those stories are about. Lady Farina came here to personally see her. Oh, I bet this is going to be the duel of the century. Ooh, I've got to see this. I knew Lady Farina would never disappoint. <laughs> yes, but don't get too excited now. My dear believers and spectators alike tend to get quite rowdy. And despite the noise, I've come to tolerate all their ruckus. You may consider this my reward to all of you. I have determined that there will be an epic duel between myself and this traveler from another land, just as you were hoping to see. Uh, now she wants to, to fight? Are we getting a little ahead of ourselves? Not afraid. Might I remind you that this is a duel against the divine? What are you trying to do, traveler? Provoking a god in front of her people? Ahem. Stand down, Clorend. I admire her bravery. Few have the courage to draw their sword against a god. She is obviously a true warrior. <laughs> Unfortunately, people nowadays only crave to be thrilled, and a mere duel will not slake their thirst for excitement! Huh. Yeah, she's right. Just a duel wouldn't be all that interesting. <sighs> On Araneus, criminals are always requesting duels to defend their honor. I'm getting a bit old to tell the truth. You see. Then, as the god of justice, I shall face this traveler in another kind of duel. A duel in court! Oh, all right! Now that'll be worth seeing! Right. This is Fontaine, after all. Such a grand opera house, it would be a pity not to use it. Why do you care so much about the crowd's reactions? Seems you've spent a little too much time in the opera house. Do you plan to have a duel in court? You mean you're going to put us on trial? <laughs> oh, we have reason to put you on trial. It's obvious, is according to Fontaine Law, no one is permitted to release any flying objects within Fontaine city limits during the first three days of each month. You are clearly guilty of violating this law, no? Oh, so that's what they've done wrong. Mm, that's our Lady Farina. No one knows the laws of Fontaine like she does. You call that obvious? What kind of law is that? Wait, flying object? <gasps> you mean Paimon? Precisely. Now, if you two have no objections, then, in the name of the Hydro Archon, I order your arrest! My apologies, Lady Farina. 
I don't mean to spoil the fun, but if you would allow me to interject, I don't think that Paimon here meets the definition of a flying object. You tell her, Linny! Finally, someone who's not crazy! How could anyone call Paimon a flying object? Ah, great magician, Linny. My beloved citizen. I'll permit you to object. But how exactly do you plan to prove your claim? <laughs> As a magician who just rained on your parade, I naturally should shoulder the responsibility of saving the show. So, with such an audience gathered here, allow me to perform a trick for everyone. Ta-da! What's that on Paimon's back? Hey, when did you do that? There, as you can all clearly see, Paimon should be classified as, well, something like a balloon. This rope has been in the Traveler's hand all along. It was just that no one could see it before. Huh? <laughs> you call that magic? <laughs> You've got to be joking. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Nice one. Huh. I'm not sure what to think. It seems Lady Farina's charges no longer hold water. sort of unexpected twist that I enjoy. With you here, today's performance can finally be called complete. Performance? You see all this as a performance? In which case, consider the matter of your trial resolved. The God of Justice will not bring charges against an innocent person. But when there are valid grounds, I will not only judge travelers from abroad, but even the gods of other lands. <laughs> I look forward to seeing your upcoming performance at the Opera House, Mr. Linny and Miss Lynette. That's enough for now. Toodaloo! Future Paimon. That whole scene just now was really. <sighs> Don't mention it. I just happened to remember that there was such a law, so I did a little preparation, just in case. I didn't think it would actually come in handy. So, now do you see what kind of god Lady Farina is? She can be a bit confusing at times, but she is still amenable to reason. Magician Linny. It sounded like you'll be performing at the Opera House, right? <laughs> I just know a few simple tricks I use to make a living. Lynette is my assistant. It will actually be my first time performing on the most prestigious stage in Fontaine, the Opera House. But isn't the Opera House where criminal trials are held in Fontaine? When there are no public trials being held, the Opera House hosts a variety of other performances. To the people of Fontaine, the line between a trial and a performance can be a little blurred. And speaking of performances, I would be remiss to forego this opportunity gifted by fate. Might I invite the two of you to see my performance? 
My brother's always excited to make new friends. Oh, sure. We don't really have anything to do now, and we wanted to go to the Opera House anyway. Splendid. In that case, why don't we go together? I'll show you the way. I just have something to take care of first. Oh, you really mean it? Then I'll take you up on your offer. This is a magical item known as a magic pocket. Perhaps you can help me distribute them to the people here. Huh? What are they going to use it for? About that... Hmm. You asked me before about the prophecy, right? Let me start by telling you a little more about what it entails. I'm not sure exactly when it began, but a prophecy has been circulating around Fontaine. It says that every person in Fontaine is born with sin. No matter how the Nation of Justice holds trial after trial, this sin cannot be absolved. Until one day, the water levels in Fontaine will rise, and the sinful people will slowly be drowned. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. That sounds pretty gloomy. Why are people in Fontaine born with sin? What is that supposed to mean? There are lots of guesses. Some say that the ancestors of Fontaine stole the power of the seas and stirred its wrath. Others say that the people of Fontaine never heeded the first Hydro Archon's warnings and offended Celestia. But here in Fontaine, evidence is what matters. There hasn't been concrete evidence for any of these claims, so they can only be regarded as conjecture. If even the people in Fontaine don't know what sin they committed, wouldn't it be better just to ignore the prophecy completely? Why bother feeling guilty all the time? That's exactly what the people did at first. But in the last few years, the water levels in Fontaine have actually started rising. Hmm. Many places have already been completely submerged and now lie beneath the sea. Many people carry on with their lives as before and shrug it off as a natural phenomenon. But my family and I think that the people of Fontaine shouldn't ignore the possibility, which would end up sentencing them to death. We hope that at least the people who reside near the waterfront can move away before it's too late. So, we've started distributing magic pockets to them. As a magical item, these magic pockets have astonishing capacity. I'm sure they will come in handy when people are moving their belongings. Oh, Hyman gets it! It's like preparing for a rainy day! But this is more than a bit of rain. Hmm. Perhaps only absolute power could ever contend with such a catastrophe. <laughs> but who knows? We're just tiny specks in the grand scheme of things. Now, if you'd like to help, then please give these magic pockets to anyone nearby. Be sure to convince them to take it, regardless of what they say. this? Ah, uh, so you also believe in the prophecy. <laughs> Keep it. I won't have any use for it. What? You mean you don't believe in the prophecy? No, no, I believe in the prophecy. But I also believe in another story. The story says that people once lived in the ocean. They were one with the ocean and couldn't live apart from it. But as time wore on, People desired to live on land and developed blood vessels, encapsulating the sea within their bodies. Thus could people set foot on land. So, if you ask me, when the water rises and takes us all, it'll be like we're going home. Oh, we hadn't heard that one before. But people can't live underwater. <sighs> all right, I'll take it. 
I guess I just feel that being dissolved into the water doesn't necessarily mean death. So you're the blonde traveler that everyone's been talking about. My apologies for not recognizing you earlier. Oh, a magic pocket? Seems you really thought of everything. I guess it's better to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Thanks. Oh, please, also thank the magician on my behalf when you get the chance. I don't want that thing. The way I see it, if the prophecy's true, it's still gonna be a long time before the water can cover everything. Life is all about living in the moment. What use is there in worrying about the future all the time? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You should still take it. You never know when it'll come in handy. Oh, all right, fine. Thanks. It's just that if I start moving, that means I've already given up on the life I have now. I'd really rather not. Oh? You already handed out all of the magic pockets? Hm. That was fast. So, what did people have to say? I bet you heard some, uh, interesting opinions. Yes, but that will change once disaster strikes. I know they'll change their minds, so it's only right to help them prepare. Is there anything else you need to do before we leave? Yes, one last thing. I have the magic pockets made by a workshop in the Court of Fontaine. Since we're out and about, I was thinking about bringing him some more materials. So, you want to collect materials? Just tell us what the materials look like and we'll help! Many hands make light work! Oh, that would be much appreciated. We'll need some Romaritime flowers. I remember seeing them near the waterfront on the east side of the harbor. You made quick work of that. I can tell you're an experienced traveler. I've also finished collecting a few here. Maybe next time you'll feel like helping too, Lynette. No way. I'm in power saving mode today. Otherwise, I fear I may not have any energy left for the performance at the Opera House. Ah, <sighs> fine. Though the performance is still a long way off. Now that we're finished here, we should get ready to head back to the Court of Fontaine. 
So, we're going to the Court of Fontaine before we head to the Opera House? Good. Paimon wants a tour of Fontaine's largest city and try... Wait, shh. Have you noticed that person over there? The young girl. Huh? What's wrong with her? Paimon didn't notice anything. <laughs> She's obviously a thief. Magicians and thieves practice similar methods. We divert attention and a distracted audience is one that won't discover what you're really doing. Watch her movements carefully. your voice down. We need to think of a way to catch her, but it seems she's very alert. Perhaps we should split up. You two can ride the lift over there and wait up top. I bet that'll be her escape route if she tries to run. All right, let's go. Are you sure that's all she took? You should check to make sure you're not missing anything else. N no, that was all. Oh, I can't thank you enough. I didn't notice a thing earlier. Anyway, I should be going now. Thanks again. Oh, were you returning with the thief had stolen? That's right. Pity I wasn't able to catch her. She distracted me by dropping the thing she stole on the ground. By the time I looked back, she was already gone. I saw the general direction she went, but Linny twisted his ankle, and I needed to make sure he was okay. Oh, did you get hurt, Linny? I'll be all right. It's just a twisted ankle, that's all. In fact, it's feeling better already. If you want to play at being a hero, at least try not to get hurt doing it. Imagine what would happen if you managed to derail our performance as a result. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Sorry, Lynette. <sighs> I have to admit that the thief was even more skilled than I had anticipated. But at least we were able to get the stolen items back, so it wasn't a complete failure. What a slippery little thief! Guess things turned out all right in the end, though. Lenny's initiative paid off! All right, let's put this little detour behind us. We should go to the Court of Fontaine now.
this thing to go into the city? What an ingenious way to get around! People in Fontaine really know how to use water! This is an aqua bus. It allows people to travel between several key locations around Fontaine. It's pretty convenient, but the ride can become a little dull after a while. The scenery is always the same. That's why it's better to travel with friends. So you mean it's still boring even when I'm riding with you? Uh, no, that's not what I meant. It's just that, uh, well, you don't really talk that much. Besides, it doesn't really feel like a real trip when it's just the two of us. It's the same as being at home. <laughs> hmm. Whatever. Guess that's what it's like to be an older brother. <laughs> it's about time for us to leave. Let's get on board. Magician Linny and his assistant Lynette. Hello, I don't believe we've. I'm Charlotte, a reporter for the Steinbird. Nice to meet you. From the Steinbird, huh? We've often relied on your paper to promote our performances. It's an honor to meet you. Wait. Could that be the legendary traveler who's been making headline after headline in their journey across to that? Amazing! You recognize everybody almost immediately! <laughs> I wouldn't be much of a reporter if I didn't know who's who, would I? Wow, today must be my day! Who knew I would end up on the same boat as so many VIPs? Could my vision finally be showing me some favor? So, Charlotte, what do you usually report on? Well, when there isn't any breaking news, I mainly cover the trials at the Opera House. You could still manage to keep readers' attention as long as you tell things from a clever enough angle, even if it's the same old topics. For example, reporting on how a scammer once deceived vulnerable girls into relationships, or how a financial criminal was once so poor that they ate a single piece of bread for five days. Oh, that's fine and all, but what I'm really after is exclusive, sensational news pieces that could shake the country. These smaller stories are a waste of my talents. Oh, I just remembered! I've been following a case lately. Well, a series of cases, actually. You mean the Serial Disappearances of Young Women case? That's right! These stories are the talk of the town right now, and it's probably the most mysterious case we've ever seen. If I'm the first with a draft ready to publish when the case is finally cracked, and it's the headline story in the Steambird! Oh! When that happens, I bet all the other reporters will shed tears of envy. I've already gathered all kinds of materials. I just can't wait for the truth to be revealed. So, what is the... Serial Disappearances of Young Women case? You mean the culprit hasn't been found? That's right. The first missing girl case happened almost 20 years ago. And ever since, after a period of time, another girl disappears. What the cases have in common is that the girls are all of a similar age, and that they've all vanished without a trace. But the scariest part is that to this day, none of the girls have ever been found. Many suspects have been arrested over the years in connection with this case, but shortly after each arrest, another disappearance would always happen. Yes, it's possible. But either way, I believe that every case has some precise truth behind it, waiting to be exposed. Yes, I agree. And at the very least, the family of those missing girls deserves some sort of explanation. <laughs> I just imagined for a second what I would do if Lynette were to suddenly disappear. I'd pay any price to get her back, and then find a way to track down the culprit. Please don't imagine that, Linny.
I really enjoyed chatting with you. Life should be full of pleasant little surprises like this. Yeah, us as well. The ride went by too quickly. Ah, I have an interview to get to. I should get going before I'm late. Okay, Hyman hopes we can chat again soon, Charlotte. See ya! <laughs> Bye now. Oh, be sure to stop by and see me at the Steambird when you have time. What a tough job. Always running around and interviewing everyone. <sighs> well, where should we go now? If you don't mind, how about we stop by my home first? Besides, I still have all the materials we collected. Sure, we wouldn't mind at all. This city is so huge, Paimon wouldn't know where to start anyway. <laughs> 